How's that better for sound? That's probably a little better. Good morning, good morning. Hey, Vicki, good morning to you. I hope you are well. Hope everything's going all right with your sister and that uh, we'll hold her dear. How are you? Morning, Bonnie. Hello, hello, hello. Glad that you're here. Hey, everyone. How are you this day? How are you? How are you? Good morning, John. Glad that you are here. Still going through all the steps. Hmm. It sounds like a lot. So, good morning, Robin. So glad you're here. Thanks for being here. It is uh, a journey this morning. We are. Uh, <clears throat> there is a storm front coming. And I can tell because my sinuses know. <laughs> so I am. Uh, so if I'm if I'm not tracking with you this morning, that you can know why. Uh, that uh, I am. But I am glad that you are all here, and I am glad that I am here with you. Good morning, Donna. Great to see you. <sighs> Sunny here in Maine, but cold. It's January. It is January. That's right. Yeah, we're gonna get some snow here in a. In a few hours, I think, and uh, you can you can smell it and feel it coming. Good morning, Deb. So good to see you this morning. I hope you're doing great. Vanny Faye Davis, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Glad you're here. Do say hello. Do say hello. Hey, Jamie. Good morning. So I saw your post this morning, and I I just if you hadn't put it out there, I wouldn't have put it out there, but um this is uh for all of us who who love jamie hey good morning irene glad you're here uh this is the third anniversary of her mom's passing and so uh i asked we we can pray for her today and just hold her dear um anniversaries are the are hard and and there's something about the third anniversary that is the first anniversary of a great loss is a shock and you're just it's the year of new things it's it's you're you're finding the newness of it uh the second year of a great loss you are uh finding how it's going to be because the first year you just stumbled through it the second year you've kind of encountered well this is how life is going this is this is the new this is the new life this is the the life on the other side of the mirror and then the third year is the year that we live into that new life for the first time. And so there's something about this, this third year that brings grief back in ways that we don't understand and we don't know. Uh, because it is, uh, it is the, it, there's a finality to the third year. That is, it is something about anniversaries that, uh, that brings things around on a whole nother level. And I, I don't know if you're going through that and I don't know if you're feeling it. Um, but I know I've, I have borne witness to it with many people and in their journeying is that there's something about that each have their own struggles and their own difficulty, but, but life is new now and it's different now and it is, this is how it shall be. And there is a finality to the whole thing. And even though it's taken three years, you know, we only have one mom. And when we talk about these great losses of life, they are things that so, Know that I'm praying for you. Know that uh, I give you a big hug if I could, and that uh, there's a whole bunch of people here that are with you too. Uh, morning, Sherry Lad. Glad you're here. Like so glad you're here. Uh, morning, 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 good morning, everybody. So glad uh, to be journeying with you today. Uh, I really, I feel that. Um, uh, I, I feel the, the joy of gathering with you, um, regardless of what we're going to talk about or whether we're going to talk at all or what are we going to do? 
I, I feel the joy of being together with you, even though we're we're sprinkled all over the South Coast, we're sprinkled all over New England, uh, some of us are sprinkled all over the world, um, but wherever you are, know that you are a part of this communion here at FCC, and you're a part of this journeying at 1111, so I'm thankful for you uh, being here and being on this journey with us. So let's get to it. This it is the 26th day of January on Tuesday. Uh, we are we are barking down February here. This will be our last week of 1111s in the first month of 2021. Does it feel like it's rocketing by to you? It does feel like it's rocketing by to me. And so all of this this uh, new journeying that we're doing and i wanted to have us just revisit a little bit about what all all of these changes so much has changed and so much continues to change and yet so much continues to stay the same and i want to talk about that that sameness in terms of god's process with us and god what god offers us and how god offers our journeying in this world and i want to start with this this uh, story from jeremiah now if, so i don't know if you remember but jeremiah is a prophet in this time when Jer- when uh, uh, the people of israel are literally the enemy is at the gates. Like literally they're looking out over the gates, over the walls, and there's the enemy. And the people have many, um, a great portion of the people have already been scooped up and taken into exile. And these are Jeremiah's words for the people uh, who are looking for help and guidance. And this is what uh, the Lord gives him to say to people who are under imminent threat of all that they know being burned down. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the, from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands, and so the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as it seemed best to him. And then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, Can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does, declares the Lord? Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. If at any time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, and if that nation I warned repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it disaster I had planned. If at another time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be built up and planted, and if it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good I intended to do it. Now, therefore, say to the people of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says, Look, I am preparing a disaster for you and devising a plan against you. So turn from your evil ways, each one of you, and reform your ways and your actions. But they will reply, it's no use, and we will continue with our own plans, and we will all follow the stubbornness of our evil hearts. Oh, so good. We will all follow the stubbornness of our evil hearts. I don't know about you, but some so many days, the uh, you know, especially it seems like these days, my heart is just out to get me. It is wants to leap into every pit of despair. It wants it, it wants to attract my eyes to every flashy and horrible thing. It wants to to uh, I, I, I hold itself up and isolate itself from those who would love it and know and wish it well. This, our, our, our damnable little hearts, our evil little hearts that would drag us into pits now and again. Now, that's not all they do, and that's not all that they're made of, granted. 
But this image that Jeremiah offers, I think, is a helpful one for us in our day. This going down to the potter's house and looking at, the, at what's being made and what's being built and this, this notion that what is being made and what is being built in our life, in your life, and in my life might look pretty marred on the wheel. It might look pretty imperfect on the wheel. It might not that the that the the hand that it seems to be on your life might look like that it it that this pot is never going to hold water. This life I'm living is never going to work out. There's there's not a way in which the things that are ahead of me that are going are in any way ever going to be better than things that were behind me. That we find ourselves in this in this conversation with our evil hearts uh and uh, you know i love that the lord says that it you know that scripture says it's it's the stubbornness of our evil hearts because i think that's the point of the trick because what is it that we talk about here what is it that that's at the at the crux of this you know what does he say he says if any time i announce to uh, that uh, that a nation our kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed. If that nation I warned repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on its disaster. Now, I don't think this is how God works. Hear me out here. I don't think this is how God works. This is not that God is not sitting there with his kind of Excel spreadsheet, kind of making see if you repented enough. You know, if you got enough Facebook likes to be re, to be worthy of repentance on any particular thing, post that you might make into your little spiritual realm. That that's that's not that's that's not what's going on here. But, but, what Scripture tells us this is the thing about Bible. Bible is not how God is. Bible is about our experience of God. Bible tells us how it is to encounter the divine. It doesn't tell us how the divine actually is. How the divine actually is, is ultimate love and ultimate wisdom in the, in the highest and most perfect order, incarnate in Christ Jesus. That's how the divine is. Our experience of that, our experience of great love, is our experience of ultimate truth is often that of being worked on a wheel and found wanting. And that somehow feeling sometimes that we're just thrown away. Gerard Manley Hopkins writes about, I find myself having wandered out of earshot of God. I find myself having wandered out of earshot of God. And that the invitation is repent. After Jesus goes to the wilderness and encounters the devil and is tempted for the 40 days in the wilderness, all of that, he emerges and gets and, and blows out of town and goes to Capernaum and in Capernaum, He's the, you get the first, you get Jesus's first words other than the ones that he spoke to the devil. I mean, this is a, after the, after he speaks to the devil, these are his, the first words recorded in scripture. And it is repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Friends, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. God's at work in your life. You're not abandoned. You're not alone. You are being worked on a wheel. And that working is this process of repentance. Now, I, I know you all have the idea that you've got, you know, the, the guy with the, you know, in the, in the unwashed clothes with the, with the sign on the corner saying repent, or kind of some old-timey radio preacher saying, you know, the repentance of the Lord. You know, something like that is probably somewhere in our, in our, in our idea. But the, the word repent there's this word metanoia. And metanoia has a particular meaning in the Greek. You know, you say metanoia. Well, there's other words related to that, isn't there? Paranoia, pronoia. 
we won't talk about those in a second, but this this notion of metanoia. Reflect on what you're what you've done and think in a new way. It is this invitation to think in a new way. But it's not, hear this out, because this is critically important to metanoia. It is not think in a new way. It is think in a new way. It is let your it is open your heart to a new movement in your life after you've looked at what's going on in the world uh, in your life and in the world. Turn in a way, change in a way that you might understand a ex- new experience of God, that you might be made into a new vessel, that you were once a pot and you will now be a candlestick holding the light of God. Speaking of which, I want to share this with you. This was... Uh, you've seen my friend, uh, my friend Matt Williams. He comes by every once in a while. Matt and I were were chaplains together in Iraq, and Matt has this incredible ministry called Vet Church. You can find it on Facebook. Do a little search for Vet Church, and if you want to be be their friend. They can use all the help. He he's a he's a singer songwriter, and he has this powerful ministry of going around and ministering to veterans uh and it's just what he does like this is not he's not sponsored by anybody he's not it's literally him and his wife and and uh and their you know and their dog and they're out there uh and covid's been a hard time for him because their ability to be itinerant and all that has been changed but but matt has been continues to be incredibly faithful and continues to to kind of let the lord's hand work on the wheel of his life and and kind of be made new things and uh he sent me this the other day he sent me this little candlestick and i, I want to show it to you I'll see if i can hold it up real close here enough that you know it, it and he said this is the first one he'd ever made uh and he found that sitting at the potter's wheel kind of helped him with some of the the worry and, and anxiety of his, of of his world, but in it he found that. Uh, but you know, he said it's the first one he made. It's wildly imperfect, friends. The journey into repentance, the journey of metanoia, the journey of turning and and opening our lives in a new way is not about firing the perfect vessel, about getting it all right. It is about our willingness to put, in fact, our imperfection into the world and stand before the Lord and let it be a holder for the divine light in this world. Let it do its work and let it shine where it needs to shine. Let God's love and God's grace go to work when we let the hand of the master move and shift our lives. When we find ourselves in the place where nothing seems to work or we're fallen or broken, or can't get up, or our stubborn little evil hearts have sucked us into another iteration of watching the news. You know, you ever notice it's our stubborn little hearts? Oh, I should see what's going on in the world. And then soon enough, all we need to do is then CNN starts crawling around our head, or Fox News, or MSM, pick, pick your poison. They're all poison. Whatever, however it plays out for you, this, this is our task to let our hands, to let ourselves be, be shaped in the hands of the master, to let go of our stubborn little hearts and let them be made new, not perfectly new. But their own beautiful incarnations as holders of the divine light in this world. So I'm grateful to my buddy Matt for sending me that. It's, I'm going to treasure it. So uh, I want, and I want to leave you 
with this prayer from Miriam Therese Winter this morning that, uh, and she prays this, and I think this is more about, this is, I think this is one of the more beautiful prayers of repentance I've ever come across. This is a new beautiful prayer of metanoia, of thinking in a new way. She writes this, so pray with me if you want. I believe in you, O Holy One, although at times there no longer seems any reason for believing. When evil stalks my dwelling place and loneliness leaves indelible traces of doubt on my childhood faith, I light a lamp in the secret room where my heart hides its tradition and quietly hug your promises as I sing songs to you. I believe in you. Believe in me. And may we believe forever. Amen. All right, friends, that is our journey today. That is uh, that we might, uh, that I want to invite you to a little metanoia today, a little thinking in a new way and in that newness let our stubbornness fall away let our uh, let our evil little hearts stop their plotting against us and let the hand of the master go to work informing our lives into a beautiful creation and a holder of the divine light all right i so good to see you all i am so 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 uh, uh grateful for each one of you that are here uh, Sharon, good morning. I didn't see you sneak in. I'm so glad that you're all here. Uh, Jamie, you're on my heart today. Uh, I'm with you, honey. All right. Peace and grace to you all.